Howdy, howdy, folks. Once again, this is Donnie coming at you with yet another video in the process management series. And today we're going to look at something which kind of has something to do with process management, just not in the same sense that we have been looking at it. But in this video, I want to look at a way that we can keep processes running even when we are logged out of the machine. And what you're seeing right now is a CentOS machine. This is CentOS 7 to be exact. And in the other room, in the room next to me, I have a mining rig running that is running Linux. Now, the problem with that mining rig is just the fact that I cannot get any type of a video display out of it. Now, it's kind of ironic considering that there are five NVIDIA 1070 Ti graphics cards on that rig, and yet I can't get a video output. And there's even an HDMI port on the motherboard, which should work because the CPU in it is a Pentium that supposedly has built-in graphics, so it's an APU basically, and yet I still can't get any video output from it. I can't even get a BIOS screen from it. So I've never figured that out, but that's okay. I just run it headless. So basically I used another machine to install the operating system onto a USB flash stick, and I just boot the machine or the rig off that flash stick and installed the NVIDIA video drivers. And of course, before doing that, I had to do an nmap scan to find the IP address of the machine and then log into it. And, uh, and then I just run it headless like that. And it works, it works fine. So, but anyway, let's go ahead here and show you what I did. If I do SSH like that into the machine, Okay, there it is. That is my mining rig now that I'm logged into. And if we do a top command, you're going to see here in just a moment, it'll come up. There it is. You see there the FDC, FDCR miner 64 there. So we can see that my mining program is going. And of course, we don't have much of a load average up here because the graphics cards are doing all the work on this. The CPU is actually doing very, very little. But uh, let's go ahead and get out of that. And and so now we're in, and if we do like that, we see the Claymore's dual Ethereum plus Decred, yada, yada, yada directory there. That's where all of my mining software is. And if we do like that, we see the different scripts here that I have. And uh, this particular script down here is for mining Ethereum. And this one is for mining Ethereum Classic. And that's actually what I'm doing right now. So I'm mining Ethereum Classic. And the normal way to start that, the normal way to start that is just to do a dot slash start and like that. And that would start it up. And of course, I'm not going to hit the enter key right now because I already have this running. But that's the normal way to start a program from the command line. Now, the problem here is that I might not want this particular machine that I'm using to log into that mining rig. I might not want that running all the time. But if I were to start the program like this, just the normal manner, as soon as they either close out that window, so I could I could just go up here and hit the little, actually, let me move this down a little bit. I could go up here and hit the little X there to close the window, and that would stop that process there on that remote machine. And of course, that's not what I want. I want for the process to keep going even after I logged out, or even if, uh, something were to happen to this machine, it were to shut down. It would shut down that process on that remote rig that I've logged into. So I don't want to do that. So what we can do instead, there are a couple different ways. Actually, we could append 
an ampersand to the end of the command and run it in the background. That's one way of keeping the process running when we shut down this machine. But that has some problems with it, okay? Because when we log back into that machine in order to get our display back of what's going on, you know, we got to jump through some hoops. So a better way of doing that is to use the screen utility. Just preface our command with screen, just like that. And that will also keep the process running when we're logged out of this, this host machine that we're using to log into there. And once we do that, it's a little bit easier to get our display back of what's going on with the program when we log in again. So we can look then at the man page for screen. And we can go down here and we can look at the, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? The list. We want to look at the dash list option. And that's going to show us our different screen sessions there. So let's go ahead here and we'll close the man page. So we'll do screen dash list like so. And it's kind of unusual because this is one of those few cases where we have a whole word as an option, but it only takes one dash instead of two. Most things in Linux, if you have a whole word as an option, it takes two dashes instead of just one. I don't know why it is like that here. But anyway, we see here that we have a, a uh, process that is attached here to this particular screen session. And we can see there that it is, well, okay, I said it's attached, but it's actually detached because it's not showing the output from it. So what we can do here is we can do screen dash R one three four seven like so. And looky there, we get our output back. So this is the program that I am running. And of course, uh, if I were to hit control C, you know, it would end the program, it would end the process, but I don't want to do that. But uh, just to show you here, just to demonstrate, I'm just going to go ahead here and close this window, like so. And now let's open up a window again and log back in. And if we do our screen, and let me get the font up there a little bit bigger, like I had before. There we go. So if I do a screen dash list again, hey, guess what? There's my mining session. So it's still there. And I can do screen dash R to reattach, by the way, 1347. And yep, there it's still there. So it works like a champ. Now, the screen utility actually has several different uses. And I'm not going to get into them here in this video because this uh, video, this series is just about process management and the other uses for screen, you know, don't really have much to do with process management, therefore other things. But uh, we'll get into those things possibly in a different video at some point in the future. But anyway, that's pretty much it for the screen. And again, if you want to see more information about screen, all I got to do is just look at the man page. Demand screen. And screen is not installed on this machine, so that's okay. So we do have it there. So that's another thing, too. I forgot to mention you might have to install screen yourself. But 
that's an easy matter. Just to use your package manager, and you got it. But anyway, you can look at screen, look at all the different options, and see all the cool stuff that you can do with it. And other than that, I do believe that's pretty much it here for this video, for our introduction to screen, and how you can use it to help you out with process management. And uh, if you like the video, be sure to like and subscribe. We'll catch you next time.